Allah Azza wa Jal revealed ahkam, governance, laws, commandments that directly appeal to the nature of the human being because Allah knows who He created and who He is giving instructions to. So when we understand Allah's commands, the idea in the Quran is actually they, they resonate. They, there's something inside you, a conscience inside you that Allah created, this fitrah inside you that Allah put. When you understand the commands of Allah, forget about discomfort, you're like, that makes complete sense. That's so wise, that's so beautiful. And if we haven't arrived at that yet, maybe we haven't thought about it enough, about the, the, the ahkam of Allah, the rulings, the governance of Allah. And on the other hand, maybe our hearts aren't pure enough yet. May Allah Azza wa Jal give us both of those things, an understanding of the Book of Allah and purity in our hearts. So one of the most politically incorrect places in the Quran is about the, the one who, the male or the female who commit adultery, that you should whip them you know, فَجْلِدُوا كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا مِئَةَ جَلْدَ Lash them or whip them a hundred times. So the Qur'an says that y'all gotta whip the people who commit adultery a hundred times. What kind of barbaric law is that? And then we take a step, no, 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 well, you know, in modern times things are different, it's okay, it's not the same time. Thing. Wait, wait, this is the timeless book of Allah. So let's understand what Allah says first before you worry about explaining it to somebody else. Ibn Ashur rahimahullah commenting on the words azaniyatu wa zani in the beginning of this ayah suggests that because the ism, the noun is used, that this is actually talking about people who repeatedly do this all the time. It's talking about prostitutes. It's talking about people who are in the illegal sexual industry. First and foremost. And there's plenty of historical, there's not something that just came out. Plenty of classical scholarship dealing with what is the context of this ayah, what is it talking about? And this was a serious problem in the city of Medina before the Prophet moved there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now the Prophet has moved there and the problem continues. And so the Quran is gonna comment on a problem that's going on in this city. And it was so threatening. Here's the part that's important. Everybody here I think has heard that the act of adultery or the act of illegal intimate relations between a man and a woman will not be punishable until you have four witnesses. You may have heard this before, that you have to have four witnesses. Now any commonsensical human being will know that nobody does something like that with four witnesses around. Nobody does that with four witnesses around. The only way you can do something like that with four witnesses around is if you're out in public. What is called in modern law, a public display of indecency. In modern law, in many countries, they have laws about public displays of indecency. As a matter of fact, if something like this was happening on the street, Texas laws are there to arrest those people and punish them. If something like that was happening on an airplane, there are laws for a few years in jail. So this is not just something new in Islam, you know, or that was brought in Islam and no one else has it. Virtually every civilized nation in the world has laws dealing with public display of indecency. They have them. And the Quran has them too, because the Quran is preparing a new civilization, a civilization of believers. And this is a very serious crime, because if that kind of shamelessness is happening openly in the street, where even four people can walk by and see it, then there are going to be children, young people, they're going to be innocent people that, that haven't been exposed to that kind of corrupt images and this is going to damage them psychologically. It's going to undermine something that is so important to the core of a family, it's going to mess people's minds up. When you, when you make something that should remain private and you make it public, then it corrupts people. It, it messes them up. Now let's take a step back and understand something. We're living at a time where, what? forget four witnesses, you can have four million witnesses because the pornography industry and the filth industry sells itself with billions and billions of dollars. Internet marketers, you know, internet marketers that can sell anything from like bamboo sticks to towels, you know, the, the most successful internet product? And internet, they're in the pornography industry. They're the leaders in marketing. When you go to marketing seminars, internet marketing seminars, the guys at the top of the industry that are making the most bang for the buck are the ones that are selling zina online. They're the ones. So this is completely public now. And when it is that public, can you imagine the damage that it does to the minds of people that are exposed to it? The damage that it's already done? How many children are messed up? How many young adults are messed up? How many marriages are getting destroyed? Because of these images floating in the public? How, how almost impossible it's become to not be exposed to some of that filth, no matter how hard you try, because there's so much money pumped into making sure that you'll see something like it. And so the Qur'an comes along and says, this is a very serious problem with very serious ramifications. People will become twisted and, and you know, confused. And they're going to become, they're going to commit crimes that won't even make sense. How many kinds of disgusting crimes are committed in the United States even against children? 
even against and violent sexual crimes. How many are reported every other minute? These are things that happen when you get exposed to this kind of filth over and over again, and it becomes normalized. You know? So the Quran steps in and says, no, if someone does this in public, then you have to punish them. And this public, this, now let's talk about this punishment. They're not killed, they're, la they're whipped. And they're whipped a hundred times. And when they're whipped a hundred times, Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't say just whip them and that's it. The fuqaha, the scholars of this deen, the sahaba themselves, they would have exhaustive discussion on how to deal with these people. By the way, this is not the only time Allah talks about punishing people like this. There are ayat that came before Surah An-Nur, much before Surah An-Nur and Surah An-Nisa. And in Surah An-Nisa, وَالَّذَانِ يَأْتِيَانِهَا مِنْكُمْ فَآذُوهُمَا The two of them, there was sometimes there were Muslim, some guy became Muslim in Medina, he became Muslim. And some girl became Muslim. But before they became Muslim, they were boyfriend and girlfriend. And they had no concept of marriage. They don't know anything because they're not Muslim. And now all of a sudden they've become Muslim. But just because they took shahada does not mean that they become super spiritual people overnight. They're human beings. They're developing. Like Allah says Himself, You're going to develop little by little by little. So Allah even describes the scenario where even Muslims, in the beginning in Medina life, even Muslims may have committed such an act. Some young, young man got tempted and he, he did something out of wedlock. He's not even married yet and he did something with a girl. What do you do with them? The ayat came down which were later mansukh by these ayat, by, many, by the opinion of many scholars. What was the punishment for them? minkum. The two of them that have done that mistake among you, فَآذُوهُمَا Then cause them pain. Allah didn't say how caused them pain, He just says caused them pain. So the Sahaba would have a debate. Ibn Abbas would say, other Sahaba would come and say, maybe what Allah means is you should yell at them. How could you do this? You should be ashamed of yourself. And that means cause them pain. Other Sahaba would say, we should take a stick and hit the bottom of their feet like 10 times, cause them pain. Nobody thought about whipping them and cutting them and hanging them upside down and stoning. No, 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 no. None of that yet. They're just young people who made a mistake. Take it easy. They just became Muslim. This mistake happened, they need to be reprimanded. And by the way, early, this is in Quran. فَإِن تَابَ وَأَصْلَحَ فَأَعْرِضُ عَنْهُمَا And if they've both made tawbah, and they say, we're well, never gonna do it again, or maybe they even get married now, leave them alone. Don't make a bigger deal out of it. Leave فَأَعْرِضُ عَنْهُمَا Ignore them, leave them alone. إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ تَوَابًا رَحِيمًا Allah Himself has always been someone who accepts tawbah. Let them move on with their life. They made a big mistake, yes, but let them move on with their life. Don't expose them more. You've already done what you could. And later on when the punishment came, it came. And by the way, even then the four witnesses was necessary, by the way. Even then the four witnesses was necessary. And so later on, when this commandment, it got tougher. If something happens now, there better be whipping. They better be whipped. But how are they whipped? You imagine some big, you know, leather thing and they just, you know, and then the guy is bleeding and he's, they do a hundred times, by the tenth time he's already dead. No, 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 hold on a second. The fuqaha would discuss this. They would say, never whip them in front of, in, you know, in a hot day or an extremely cold day because the skin will be extra sensitive. Don't whip them out in the, the blazing sun because that's, that's not punishment Allah intends for them. When the guy raises his hand, his armpit shouldn't show. So he shouldn't go like this. Like, you know, we think that when you're going to punish, then the guy we should get is like a pro wrestler or somebody who's going to, when he whips, is going to be like, you know, serious. No. No, that's not the point. As a matter of fact, it's more ceremonial than anything else. In Islamic history, the, this punishment has been executed. Uh, by the way, Islam spread across continents, you know that. Hundreds of millions of people have been Muslim throughout the last 14, 1500 years. And this is recorded to have happened maybe three, four times. There was not an occasion where this would even be executed. That's Islamic history. Across the, across the continents. And if, if it did happen, make sure their armpit doesn't even show. And they hit. And if it, if it hits any part of the body that can be lethal, don't hit there. And if one part is getting injured, don't hit there again. And don't hit on the face. And don't hit on sensitive parts. And this is all this exhaustive instruction. By the way, I didn't mention the ending of the previous ayah when the whipping is happening. Allah says, وَلْيَشْهَدْ عَذَابَهُمَا طَائِفَةٌ مِّنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ First of all, لَا تَأْخُذْكُمْ بِهِمَا رَأْفَةٌ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ don't become compassionate when you're punishing them. In other words, even the people punishing them, even the one raising the whip, feels bad and says, I don't want to do this. And Allah says, I know you don't want to do it, but still you have to do it. 
Allah is not telling him to be harsh. Allah is telling him, I acknowledge the love for you have for your sinful Muslim brother. We are learning in this ayah that people, even the people who committed such a terrible sin in public, even then the Muslim has so much love for the fellow Muslim that he can't even get himself to punish without having rahmah and ra'fa, compassion and mercy in his heart for the one he's punishing. You're not, some people think, I want to establish sharia, which means I just want to whip somebody. You know, I just want to hit him real good, because that means iqamatul hudud. What Quran are you reading? Allah Azza wa Jal is describing to you that you already have ra'fa, you have compassion and hold it back because you have to do a difficult thing. You have to hit your fellow believer. And then after he's, he says that, he says a group of mu'mineen should watch it. Not just any believers, and mu'min means mature believers. People with, you know, ar-rasikhuna fil ilmi wal iman. People who are, are deeply rooted in their faith. He doesn't just say alladhina amanu. He says al mu'mineen So mature believers should watch the punishment happening. Mature believers, worshippers, spiritually mature people, older people, wiser people, they're watching the punishment. Why? Why should they watch? They should bring young people to watch. Hey, don't do this, see what's gonna happen to you? Allah didn't say that. Allah said, bring the mu'mineen. And Ibn Qayyim and other scholars commented, the reason they should bring them is as they are being punished, the mu'mineen will be making dua for the ones that are being punished. Because they are not dead yet. They are still alive. And if Allah condemned them to hellfire, then Allah did not want them to breathe anymore. So long as they are breathing in this world, the room for tawbah is open. And so they're paying the price for their sin in this world. They could use the dua. Ya Allah, give them sabr, give them tawbah, accept their tawbah, let them move on with their life, unite us with them in akhirah in a good place. That's the job of those who are watching. The job of those who are watching is not to say, see that? That's what you get. That's not their job. This is Quran. And so a hundred lashes.